cookies all come from Eastern Europe. Eastern European baking encompasses many different cultures, ethnicities, and languages. But one thing this region is known for is that many of their treasured recipes have been passed down from generation to generation. Today I'll share four recipes, including gusfi, kolache, priyaniki, and kruschiki, which I'm not going to teach you how to make, but my mom, my beautiful mom, Big Martha, teaches her granddaughter the recipe for a family favorite, all today on Martha Bakes. In Poland, they call them kruschiki, and in America, something like angel wings or bow ties. They're a Polish treat that have lighter than air texture, and they're one of my mother's specialties. And today, I have my niece Sophie, who is becoming part of the tradition of making kruszczyki in our family. So you're doing the zest for us? Yes, you want about one teaspoon of orange zest and one teaspoon of the lemon zest. Right, so this is mother's recipe and we're going to follow everything that she does. Well, two whole eggs and then yolks, five yolks. And I, save the whites. I used to make Lady Baltimore cake with all the egg whites. I remember, you never do that anymore. <laughs> In Polish, kruszczyki, loosely translated, means cookie. But among Polish Americans, they're also served at weddings and at other festive occasions, including Christmas. Do you remember? We uh, had a big metal um, picnic ba a basket. A I should have brought it to yeah, show you. Yeah, you should have. And that would be layered with kruszczyki. And I try to hide it in the basement someplace, but kids always we found always it. We always <laughs> found it. So we beat the eggs. Yes, and then you add your uh, flavorings, a little bit of sugar. Like three and, tablespoons? Yes. Okay. One and a half teaspoons of salt. So a teaspoon of orange extract. Teaspoon of orange, a teaspoon of lemon, and a teaspoon of vanilla, and the lemon, All right. and rum. Don't forget the rum. One teaspoon of dark Mix rum. Mix that up a little bit. Well, it's all going to uh, dissipate in the cooking. One tablespoon of melted butter. Three tablespoons of sour cream. My mother always puts sour cream in her doughs. Her I think it's supposed to make dough. the dough a little tender. Yes. I think I even used a, a teaspoon of vinegar. Well, should I, we put it I in? don't know. Like white vinegar? Yeah. Oh, so maybe we should get some white vinegar. Sophie, would you go back into the uh, cupboard and get sure. white vinegar? Beat it until it's thick and lemon colored. So here's the vinegar, Mom. There you go. All right, I'll have just a wee bit. And when does the zest go in? Oh, after this becomes lemon colored. Okay. Thick and lemon colored. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, that's a secret. So you're going to sift three cups of flour. Should I put the zest in? Yeah. So here we have lemon and orange zest. Are you watching, Sophie? Yes, I am. Are you blend it in gradually? Sophie, you're developing into an excellent young cook. <laughs> So what you need to do is add enough flour for a fairly stiff dough, right? How does it's it a, taste, Martha? Well, it's a good dough. It's yeah. a very, yeah, the flavor's just right. Okay, Sophie, now you watch. This comes with practice. <laughs> I have plenty of practice. <laughs> Look, you press with the heel of your hand uh -huh. and sort of automatically roll oh, it back. Oh, roll it backwards. See, I didn't yeah. know you are rolling it back. You don't Try need again. any more flour. Okay. Yeah, right, okay, now. <laughs> Press. That's right. Only <laughs> right. You have to develop a speedy movement. Yeah, see the better. Yeah, see? It's mm -hmm. coming. Grandma to the rescue. Okay. So we want to divide this in half because we um, each half makes quite a number of kushikis. And have a bunch of cookie sheets that are lined with parchment paper mm -hmm. and some clean flour sack cloths. To lie over them? Mm-hmm. We try to keep it in the shape of a rectangle, uh -huh. so it would be easier to cut into shapes. Now watch this. I love that, how you handle it. I'll just dust that so yeah, lightly. Yeah, dust it a little bit. Yeah, it's hmm? just thin enough to let light through almost. Yeah. Right. Now the cutting technique. 
Not too narrow and no. not too fat. Okay. All right, now we okay. usually, I usually cut it on a diagonal. Why don't you just show how to form those? Okay, I'll, I'll cut the rest you. for you. You make a slit like mm -hmm. this in the middle. Yes. Then you take it like that. Yeah. And pull it through. See, That's it, really? Wow. That's all it is. Can I try one? Sure. All right, all so, like... oh, I'll do this slit. Okay. You have a slit in the middle. You take it. A little, stretch it a Hold little it up bit. in your stretch left hand. Stretch it up hand. a little. Hold in the left it. hand. No, no, left hand here. Okay. Left hand. Yeah. <laughs> just, no. No. Now bring down the top. Bring down the top. Through the hole. Through the hole. And up. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Gosh. That's good. All right. Lovely. See, and stretch it a little bit so it's okay, flat. Okay, so, yeah. So the ends are flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They fry very quickly, and you have just to watch. Don't turn crowd. them once. So you turn it once. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Wow. Thank you. This is a perfect one. one. And so, yeah, of course, we have brown paper bags here. You have to drain as much of the fat off the surface as mm -hmm. you can. Lay them on the cooling rack. Lay them on the cooling rack. And then now you can see some of them are different mm -hmm. colors. But it doesn't matter, I don't think. I think Once the... they're covered with powdered sugar, you'll never see the difference. Yes. This is how I usually do it. Take the biggest ones and put them on the bottom kind of build it into a Christmas tree shape. Mm -hmm. And there we have our Krishjiki Tower. It's so nice to have all three generations in the same place at the same time, working in the same kitchen. Once you see how these cookies are shaped, you'll understand why they're called goose feet. Hailing from Russia, they're flavored with ardent zest and vanilla bean and owe their feather light texture to a secret ingredient. And it's not goose. But see the foot? This is one of my two geese from my chicken yard. They're the guardian geese. This is a Pomeranian and not used to being on TV, <laughs> especially in a kitchen on the counter. Whisk together in one bowl, all-purpose flour, one and three quarter cups, one teaspoon baking powder, half a teaspoon coarse salt. That's the dry ingredients. And now, your other ingredients. One stick of butter and a beloved Russian ingredient. This is it, farmer's cheese. It's unripened and it can be made in just a couple of days. And the flavor of this fresh cheese tends to be subtle and delicate. And it's a, a delicious Eastern European cheese. So, one cup. And to this, Scrape out all the seeds from a nice vanilla bean. Look how many seeds are in that vanilla bean. Thousands and thousands of little seeds and the grated zest of one bright-skinned orange. And just use a grater like this, this orange zest adds a beautiful flavor to these goose feet. And now stir this up So there, see how nice and smooth this is now? And now add your dry ingredients to the butter and farmer cheese ingredients. And stir this together. The dough will be crumbly. It'll look pretty much like pâte brisée, pie crust. And once it's sort of all together, wrap it in a piece of plastic wrap in a disc and chill for at least one hour. So here's our beautiful disc of dough. Now roll until the dough is about an eighth of an inch thick. Now I'm cutting this into four inch rounds with a four inch round biscuit cutter. And we should get 14 rounds. I'm definitely not going to get 14 out of this, but you can re-roll your scraps. Now brush each round with water. And before it dries out, dip that right into a mound of sugar. Fold in half. Brush again. Dip again. And fold in half. So keep brushing, dipping, and folding. 
the sugar is on the inside now until we do the last brushing and sprinkling and that is with an egg wash and we have beautiful glistening coarse sanding sugar sparkles like beautiful diamonds now pop these into a 350 degree preheated oven and bake until golden just about 25 to 30 minutes now I'll just finish the rest of these and put them in the oven and I'll show you what they look like when they come out. So let the cookies cool completely on wire racks. And by the way, these cookies are best eaten the day they are made. When you take a look at these, I think you'll agree that Goose Feet, that name, couldn't be more fitting. Enjoy. Jam filled and drizzled with a sugary glaze, lip smacking treats called kolaches are a bakery classic in Eastern Europe. Though in the mid 1800s, they were brought by Czech immigrants to Texas, where they still remain very popular today. In a small bowl, stir together one package of active dry yeast and one quarter cup of sour cream. And just mix this up together. And in about 10 minutes, it will be ready to use. Just let that rest. And then in another bowl, two cups of all-purpose flour, one quarter cup of sugar, and one teaspoon of coarse salt. Mix those together, and we're going to cut the butter, two sticks, half a pound of unsalted butter cut into little quarter-inch squares. I cut that right into the dry ingredients. This is very, very similar to making a pastry for a pie a pot brise. Now this is AC cold because you want it to cut nicely without softening too much into your dry ingredients. I just stir this around. And this is the old fashioned way of making pot brise. Either rubbing the fat and flour with your fingertips or using one of these little contraptions. I love these. This is really used for egg salad or pastry making and just cut the butter into the flour and sugar. Now, if I waited a little bit longer, I would put this in the refrigerator to stay chilled, but um, this is what the yeast mixture looks like when the yeast is appropriately softened. So add two eggs to your yeast mixture and break those up and just stir them around. You can see that this does get very nice and smooth. Done. Now get this right into your dry ingredients and stir it around. You can turn this dough right out onto a piece of plastic wrap form into a rectangle and chill the bench itself. You want to cut three inch squares and you can use a cookie cutter to do this. So the closer you roll the dough to multiples of three inches, the easier that. And cut. See how easy it cuts? So beautiful. Perfect. With a little left over to spare. So just remove your excess dough and move the squares right to parchment covered baking sheet. Let me show you how to form the cookies. So in the center of each cookie, one level teaspoon of your favorite filling. This is a homemade peach jam, which is a pretty color. It has a real fruit in it. And it's good to use a measuring spoon like this because you don't want to put too much jam in the cookie. It will tend to leak out. So now you need to only egg wash one corner. This is the glue that holds the cookie together. Use a soft brush and a slightly beaten egg. And then you fold this corner up and this corner over, just like that. This corner up, 
Move this corner down. What a pretty cookie. And wait you see how it looks when it comes out of the oven. You see, they're not terribly difficult, but they are very impressive. So I'm going to get these into the oven, bake until the edges are golden, 12 to 15 minutes. So this is what the cookies look like when they come out of the oven. These have cooled, and now to gill the lily, as they say, just about a cup. tablespoons of whole milk. We're making a little drizzle. And two tablespoons of melted butter. Why butter? Well, it just enriches the glaze. You could also use heavy cream and the sugar. And whisk until all the lumps are out. And you see it gets a little bit thicker. And now just drizzle as much or as little as you like across each cookie. I'm doing it right on the parchment on which the cookies were baked. So I'm not making any big mess. Let the glaze harden or set as they say, and then you can put them on a serving platter and watch them disappear. No matter what you choose to fill your kolaches with, you'll understand why they're as popular here as they are in Eastern Europe. This is a Russian bakery favorite called Piraniki, and it gets its name from the Russian word for well-spiced. Filled with luscious plum preserves, Piraniki are made with a delicious combination of honey, brown sugar, and gingerbread spices. We need three and a half cups of all-purpose unbleached flour, half cup, three full cups. And we use a combination of ginger, cardamom, cardamom, all the flavors, oh, nutmeg, don't forget nutmeg, all the flavors of a fine gingerbread cookie one and a half teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of cardamom. A quarter of a teaspoon of ground cloves, another lovely pungent spice. And I'm using a really nice fresh cinnamon, two teaspoons and two teaspoons of ground ginger. Perfect. And nutmeg, the grating, which has about three quarters of a nutmeg, which equals a half a teaspoon. Mm. Now whisk these together. Really delicious. There. And in the bowl of your mixer, cream two sticks of unsalted room temperature butter. With the flat beater, add three quarters of a cup of packed dark brown sugar. The darker the color of the brown sugar, the stronger the taste. So use the one that you really like the best. That was a half, and here is the quarter. And to the brown sugar and butter mixture, add one large egg and three quarters of a cup of honey. Choose the honey you really like. So on low speed, start adding your flour mixture. Just mix until the dough is well combined. Divide the dough and shape into flat rectangles. The dough should chill for at least an hour, preferably longer. And right into the cold refrigerator. Well, this is a very, very wet dough, so keep turning and flouring. And keep rolling, turning, and keeping the dough loose because we're going to cut these cookies into rounds, a quarter of an inch thick. And put these on your baking sheet. It's a very nice dough.
If it's sticking, just leave it there. We could pick it up with a little spatula. See how easily you can lift? Get one of these very flexible pancake spatulas, I call them. They're very pliable and they work wonders with cookie dough. We want an even number of cookies because we're going to fill these with plum jam. And freeze until they are firm. So after rolling out all the dough and cutting it all into circles, I'm going to end up with 16 cookies. Every other cookie brush with some water. The water is going to act like a glue and then you cover with a round on top of the jam. I'm putting about a teaspoon of plum jam on each cookie. They really just look like that. They will bake and become nice round cookies with a surprise in the center. At this point, preheat your oven to 350 degrees and get those right into the oven until they're puffed and dry. That's going to take 14 to 16 minutes. So let the cookies cool completely on wire racks. That's the cookie. Would you think that has something inside? There's absolutely nothing to give the filling away. I love the shape. I love the look of this cookie. Now you can glaze or you can stencil with powdered sugar. I'll show you both very simple techniques. To make the glaze, one cup of confectioner's sugar and a couple tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. The lemon tastes really, really good uh, on top of this gingerbread, this spicy cookie. And I think this is just about three tablespoons. One, two, yes, three. Stir this up until you have a nice, smooth glaze. And we're going to just dip our cookies in this, just the tops. If it's too thick, just add a little bit more lemon juice. Now you could use an orange glaze on these cookies. Just let it drip right off onto a parchment covered pan underneath. These are a homey, delicious spice cookie. Mm, do those look good? Now, this is fun. This is a stencil that we use for crafting, but it's a faux bois pattern. But if you just lay this on top of the cookies and sprinkle with confectioner sugar, it makes a really pretty and unusual design on the tops of the cookies. Now lift this off very carefully. Pretty snazzy, don't you think? Faux bois cookies. Now let these dry until they are completely set. And on a cold winter's day, what could be more perfect than one of these delicious piraniki? Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Now here's a tip for storing, serving, and transporting your beautiful piraniki. Just put little squares of parchment that you've pinked on the edges in a vintage baking tin. Stand the cookies on end. You can cover this with a tight piece of plastic wrap, or you can transport wrapped in a beautiful piece of cellophane. Wouldn't that be nice with a big ribbon? It's a good idea for a delicious cookie.